Hello, my name is Andy Durrant from Race Technology uh, and in today's video I wanted to introduce our brand new uh, video joining software. So this is a, a new utility that allows you to take the, um, the files from a GoPro, um, so the chapters um, of a video, and join them together into one continuous video. So, um, as you know, for some time we've been supporting GoPro cameras within our software, um, but there's a particular problem with them which has been quite inconvenient for a number of our users and that is when the GoPro records, uh, it splits the videos into quite short chapters. So those chapters are um, based on file size, so the maximum file size you can have on a GoPro is 4 gigabytes. So what happens as you're recording a video is it records 4 gigabytes worth and then it stops and it starts another 4 gigabyte file and so on. Now, sometimes that's absolutely fine because uh, your entire video fits within 4 gigabytes, in which case you take the card out of the camera and you've got a single file for a single video, so that's cool. Um, but if you're doing a longer race, so um, you know, maybe an hour's race or something, you come back and you've not just got one file, but you've got maybe half a dozen files. Uh, and that's a problem within our software because, as it was, the software only allows you to import one video file at a time. So that meant there was no practical way to look at all your video from the entire race. So because of that, we thought, well, okay, GoPro must do a utility to allow you to join these individual chapters together into one complete video. But as far as we can tell, there isn't such a utility out there. So maybe they will introduce one, maybe they won't. But in the meantime, we thought, well, it's something that our users need. So um, we've developed one. So um, there's a couple of other things to consider with, uh, with GoPro cameras. So as I say, the first issue is that a complete video is split into separate chapters. Um, to join those together, well, the, the, you can do that with regular video editing software, but that has two problems. Problem number one is it's really slow. So normally, if you're using video editing software, what it will do is take each individual chapter, uh, and before joining them, it will re-encode them to produce a final video. Well, if you take all the, the video from a GoPro and you re-encode it, that means, as well as downloading, and you've got to do that process, that can take hours. So it's really very slow and not really practical, and certainly not practical while you're at the racetrack. Um, and problem number two is the modern GoPros, they also include GPS data embedded as part of the video file. And that's really handy. I'm going to talk about that later, actually. Um, and we can automatically synchronize using that, that GPS data. So that's really good data to keep. And normally, when you join the videos using any other utility, that GPS data is cleared from the video file. So you get a final complete video, but there's no GPS data included in it. So our utility is somewhat different. Um, number one, it's incredibly fast. I'll demonstrate that in a moment. And number two, it keeps all the GPS data. So your final complete video is all the individual chapters joined together, but also it has all the GPS data, just as if it was recorded as a single file on the camera itself. Okay, so this is the camera we've been using for our, our testing. So this is a GoPro 7 uh, Silver. So at the time of recording, this was the cheapest GoPro that has built-in GPS. Um, they're about £250 currently in the UK, I guess about $300 in the US. Uh, I have to say in the past I've not been a massive fan of GoPro cameras. They've been a bit clunky and the user interface was, used to be a nightmare. Um, but these modern ones are seven. I've been using this lots in, uh, in our own cars. It's really very good indeed. So that's the camera that we've got the footage from. I should say our software supports previous versions of the uh, GoPro camera as well. Some of the firmware on the earlier cameras, it was a bit sketchy though. So if you do run into problems with joining it, it's normally because you need a firmware update for your camera. But anyway, so this is the, the camera we've been using. Um, I'll start up the software uh, on this PC. So this is the latest version 10 uh, of our software. So as you can see, there's a new utility here, GoPro Video Joiner. So if we start that up, and this is what the user interface looks like. So if we minimize some of these, so basically, it's a file explorer, looks at your computer, um, but it's intelligent enough to understand the chapter format of GoPro videos. So just to reiterate, this is um, GoPro terminology off their website. When you press record on the GoPro camera, or however you start it, it obviously starts a recording. So that's one video, and within one video, there's multiple chapters if it goes on. So you can have video one, and within video one, you could have chapter one, two, and three, and so on. Um, there's another important point as well. In most video modes, not all of them, but the vast majority, the GoPro actually records two videos at the same time. So it records a full resolution MP4 file, and that MP4 might be full HD or 2K or 4K, depending on how you have your camera set up. And it also records an LRV file. 
don't know what LRV stands for, but that's a lower resolution video. Ah, lower resolution video maybe. Okay, so that's, that's the more compact version of the MP4 file. Now, depending on what work you're doing, sometimes it's useful to use the MP4 and sometimes it's useful to use the LRV. So within the office, we've been doing various tests. Broadly, if you're doing a presentation video, so something that you want to do an overlay, upload to YouTube, or maybe demonstrate to sponsors, you know, that kind of thing, if the last wording quality is really very important, then obviously you want to be using the MP4. But for most stuff, and certainly for any data analysis applications, the LRV is absolutely fantastic. So actually the video quality is still very good, I mean, it's as good as DVD quality. Um, but most importantly, the file sizes are much, much smaller, so it's much quicker to transfer the files, they take up less room on your hard drive, and they're just much quicker to handle. Um, so yeah, so okay, so you've got the LRVs, you've got the MP4s. So this is the software. Um, onto, this, uh, onto my desktop, I've actually copied some files. So if you look on the desktop, we've got an example here. So I've got a directory, GoPro uh, to join. And within here, you can see that the program has identified that there's a bunch of chapters within that video. So if we look at the real directory, just to see what's actually on my hard drive. So if I open that directory, you can see there's a directory GoPro to join, and there's a bunch of LRV files in this example. So yeah, our software has identified there's a LRV video. So that's video index 0001. And within that single video, we've actually got 14 chapters. That's quite a long recording. I think that was about three hours of, of, of video. So if we click on those, you can see it's not very interesting. It's just um, uh, somebody driving down the motorway. Um, also here we've got um, we've got a uh, SD card straight from the GoPro. So um, if we look in the DCM folder, DCIM, which is where the video is stored, and then 100 GoPro, you can see there's actually quite a few videos in there. So it's identified an MP4 index 2, LRV index 2, MP4 LRV. So some of these have got one chapter, some have got multiple chapters. But it's identified that for each video the chapters that go with it. Okay, so that's that. So that's the file explorer side of things. On the other side, as I mentioned, we've got a preview window, so you can have a quick look just to see what the video is to make sure that you're getting the right one. You can uh, scan through it and play and pause and so on. There's also some information about the video. So in this particular case, um, this is the one on my desktop. The video is made up of 14 chapters. The video is 50 frames per second. And it's the LRV standard resolution for this camera, which is um, 848 by 480. And it also confirms that the, uh, there's, there's GPS data in there. There's a couple of other options. So we either have the option just to join them all, which is by far the most common option. Um, however, in some applications, you might want to re-encode at the same time. So this slows things down massively. The main application here is if you've got some really big files from the GoPro and you want to keep them on your hard drive, it gives you the opportunity of reducing the bitrate. So we'll leave that for later. Um, and the only other option is we can either save to the original source folder or we can direct it to save it to another folder. So let's just do a simple one to start with. So we're not re-encoding. We want to save it to the source folder. So we simply select that one. You can see the little blue, blue dot there. And I click Go. OK, so initially it's just checking all the files are there. It's checking they're all the same format, that they can be joined and so on. And now it's joining them. Um, so that's the time to completion and the number of frames per second which is processing, which in this case is around, well, it's gone over 10,000 now. 12,000. So there we are. I'm not quite sure how long that took, maybe 15 or 20 seconds. And that was joining about three hours of video. So now if we go to the source directory, so this um, directory here, you can see you've got LRVs all intact, but also we now have a MP4 file. So the input files, they're about 150 kilobytes each, something like that, and the total file size is about 2.2 megabyte, 2.2 uh, gigabytes. So if I just select all those LRVs, so you can see the the, the total size of all the LRVs was about 2.2 gigabytes, which is exactly what the resultant file is. So it's not really done any video processing on those LRVs. All it's done is separated out the GPS data and the video data, joined all the video data, joined all the GPS data, and then stitched them back together. So actually, the processing speed. Um, it's dominated by how long it takes to copy the files. So in that case, all the files are on my hard drive, they're on the desktop, so that was particularly quick. You'll find if you do this from the SD card, then it completely depends on the read speed of your SD card. So I'd highly recommend getting a USB 3 uh, SD card reader, and then the performance is pretty similar. If you use USB 2 or you've got a slow SD card, it can take a long time. So if we just check the output video, so I say it's not very interesting, it's just um, driving along there. The main point is, you can see how oh, you can actually see how long the video is. So yeah, just short of three hours. 
get rid of that. So close that one. Okay, so that's the um, the most basic uh, option. So if we just um, take a look at another one, so let's pick a LRV. So let's pick this this one here. Again, it's not very interesting. It's just one of our many test files from work. Uh, and this time, let's choose a different directory. So let's copy it onto the desktop at the same time. So I'll put it there. And it's going to be automatically named as GP0003 joined MP4. So it's taken the original source uh, video name and it's just um, added joined on there. So if I click on go. So in this case, it's slightly different. So it's taking it directly from the SD card, which I think is a USB 2 on this machine. I know it's not very fast and it's going to do the same operation. So if we could click go. So again, you can see it started to generate the file on the desktop there. Um, at the moment, it's just checking the files just to make sure they all exist and there's no errors in them and then it will start joining them. In this case, it will be a bit slower. Like I say, not only is it joining the files, it also has to copy them off the SD card in the first place. So this time it's going along about a thousand frames per second. So it's about a tenth of the speed. So it's nothing to do with the software. It's just a, a limitation of the PC. Okay, so the, uh, it's finished now. So I've said completed. Click OK and close that. And uh, you can see the join file is now on the desktop, as you'd expect. Um, open with, oh, I don't know what program, oh, let's open it with VLC. And again, not very interesting, just uh, one of our, our many test runs. So, okay, so that was LRVs. We could join MP4s in exactly the same way, makes no difference. MP4s are proportionally slow just because of the size of the video. Um, and... Um, yeah, I haven't also demonstrated the re-encoding. Um, again, there's nothing more to it. You just tick the option. You, you select the output resolution. So it is possible to upscale an LRV. Um, so you can have taken the LRV as an input and you could output as 4K if you wanted to, but there's no real benefit to that. By far the most common application is you take an MP4 file and reduce the bit rate um, for storage on the PC and so on. So the software is completely free to download um, and use the, the GoPro joiner. It does ask for registration with your email, but we there's no cost associated with that. Um, it's free, a bit free as a software upgrade to all our existing users. Um, okay, so I hope that was of interest. Um, I never know whether I'm talking too much or not enough, but I wanted to give a, a gentle introduction to how to use the, um, the new software. So I hope you found that useful. Thanks very much.